This movie tells a story of mismatched cousins, David and Benji, who reunite for a tour through Poland to honor their beloved grandmother. The adventure takes a turn when the odd couple's old tensions resurface against the backdrop of their family history. This movie could have been a great character study of two men who are different sides of the same coin, however, the plot arc is really familiar. The movie feels disconnected and trite, it does a poor job explaining why the melancholy of a middle-aged layabout belongs in a movie whose backdrop is one of history's greatest monstrosities. It's essentially a micro-documentary airdropped into an unrelated study of a character who would be equally troubled on a visit to Rome. There's an unpleasantly mechanical feeling, when after the cousins have one of their blowouts, they are reconciled by visiting a concentration camp. The script overwrites its characters' fumbling attempts to reconcile their privileged, everyday unhappiness with the perspectives of the far less fortunate. Using the Holocaust to do so makes it gross rather than deeply profound. The dynamic between the two main characters is established immediately, both Benji and David are very disapproving and envious of each other. Emotional pain is experienced in different ways. Benji improvises through life, David follows a script. Each man is a pain to the other, each suffering his own brand of pain. Unfortunately, there's a lot of vagueness surrounding Benji being the way he is and why, while David has little purpose except to react to his wayward cousin. The other characters are simply wallpaper for both leads. Benji's repeated silly interruptions, bad jokes, non-stop juvenile vulgarisms, and generally boorish behavior are the focus of the movie, whose serious elements are simply appropriated from the setting rather than built internally. Benji's depression not only doesn't make his bad behavior forgivable, it doesn't even make it interesting. Narcissistic and shallow, he is meant to come across as devastatingly complex and attractively anguished, but he feels more like a desperate-for-attention high-energy entertainer. No matter where the group goes, Benji continuously redirects everyone's attention to himself, interrupting with banal observations that he presents as piercing ironies about the nature of tourism. The movie limits how it expresses its notions about grief, the wounding effects of the past, and trauma. There are things that hold the film back from being completely effective. One of those negative aspects is the over-reliance on comedy to numb the film's pain. The comedic lines provided to Benji are overly thought out and sometimes even a bit too exaggerated. The comedy feels amplified rather than realistic. It removes him from the grounded nature of the film, as well as the rest of the cast. The movie tries to say more with less, but as soon as the witty dialogue arrived, it planted artificial seeds that detached the project from reality. Because of these moments, of which there are plenty, it's very difficult to connect or be captivated with the character and the movie itself on a more profound level. The movie doesn't provide many answers, nor does it fully resolve the relationship between Benji and David. There could have been more depth to Benji's journey as well, as there remains quite a few hanging threads about his life that don't paint the fullest picture. There are many questions the characters' conversations could have pushed further. Overall, it's not worth to watch this in theaters, just wait on your streaming service.